What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast, if you can believe that. And I'm very excited today to be joined in studio by my longtime friend now, Dr. Michael Moeller. Mike, what's going on, brother? Hey, Jay. Uh, excited to be here. Honor and privilege as always. And uh, I was just thinking about how, how awesome of a conversation we already had to just catching up before the podcast. So I'm excited to sit down and talk. Yeah, man. It's awesome. It's always good to talk to you. So m- most of you guys who um, know me or have been following me know Michael, of course, from the Optimized Life podcast. He's actually been a regular there for almost most of 2019. Uh, and Michael and I just literally met through social media, the wonder of social media, about a year ago, dude. That's um, right. Yeah, that is right. It's literally about a year ago. And, and you know, then I came down there and met you. I think it was like in February or something like that. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, and we sat down and we talked and everything. But uh, And then you became a regular on the show. So this podcast is obviously long overdue. Um, but as you know, as I do on these podcasts, before we get into the topics, man, you know, talk a little bit about how you got here on this show here today. Well, even working backwards, uh, you were so kind. I saw, I, and I'd been following you for a while. And with the 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 doctors round table, I remember sure. Jim and Keith were on there, just kind of yep. spilling out their soul, like everyone does. And I said, "Man, you guys, you guys are killing it." I'm so happy to be um, in a field where people are giving back and spiritually, right? Like that's one of the coolest things too about your angle now is bringing in the psychological, the spiritual, and mental part of medicine that's been so overlooked. Uh, so my background, originally from Southern Illinois, grew up on a farm. Uh, I personally got sick and uh, my undergraduates and basically the medical system couldn't fix me. I had what was called interstitial cystitis after four or five rounds of antibiotics and a cystoscopy. Um, that's where they shove a camera up your penis hole to look around what's going on in your bladder. So uh, really not a lot of fun. And I basically had a medical doctor just tell me, hey, you have an improper lining of your bladder here's more medication and it was just antibiotics. Yeah, man. And, and, and at that point I was like 21. I was just scared, right? Like I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And, um, I originally was a history major kind of found out all the political stuff that was going on there, moved into health ed and you know, Hey, the food guide pyramid, eat, eat all this weed. It's good for you. You know, I just, after I got sick myself, I really started scratching my head. And at that point I kind of fixed myself. I was in a bodybuilding personal trainer, worked at GNC you know, I cut out the crap. Uh, I started sleeping more, sauna, fasting, eating better, you know, gluten-free, dairy-free. And my symptoms of that uh, interstitial cystitis went away. And that's when I kind of- Like magic. Like magic, really. And that was when I was like, huh, maybe there's something to this alternative medicine, which I really do not like the phrase, like we're the original. That's the original medicine is nature, right? And like almost all this stuff- you're a true well, healer. That's what I call people anymore. I don't even like to use anything yeah. functional, integrative. It's all bullshit. It's healer or not healer, right? Sick care doctors are not healing anybody. They're just dispensing drugs. Chasing, chasing symptoms. And like how many things like even it, and, and we can follow, follow the, the proofs in the pudding, like with, with your following now, how many of the things that you talk about, like grounding, right? And light therapy. It's just, it's the, the formula is all there in nature. And don't get me wrong. There is a time and place. You break your arm or right. something's falling exactly. off and you stitches, go get that fixed. But you that's when shot I shot in a drive-by shooting and you got a bullet, you're probably going to need to get that metal removed. But outside of that, probably the detox tea is not going to help you at that point. <laughs> all right, folks, probably, probably want to go to uh, go to the emergency room, but really kind of taking this natural and holistic view of not only my, where I was in my health, but in life in general. And that's when I started, you know, going down a spiritual rabbit hole and then I started shadowing different doctors. At that point, I decided I need to go to medical school. I was right. kind of figuring out everything. I had a lot of the background. I really liked working out. I did a couple of bodybuilding shows. And then again, as I kind of explored different doctors and philosophy, the philosophy point was the most important for me. Um, I eventually came to naturopathic medicine. Nice. So then I went to school in Bastyr, California, San Diego. And uh, now I've been practicing for the last, uh, last three years. And a lot of a lot of what you, you talk about here, testosterone replacement, peptides, but again, sitting down with people and trying to get to the root cause 
of where they're at now. And so it's, it's been an honor and a privilege to connect with people like you and a lot of the patients that come in the door. And I've just been astounded how much of it too is just listening. You know, people, we live in such a, such a go and get it world that we forget about the community part, right? And, and settling down and connecting with people. And, and that's really a lot of medicine you know, is the, the mindset. I read a really cool article last night just about how the body is a reflection of the internal, right? You're attending to the garden. It's going to show your shoulders are going to be back. You're going to feel better. You're going to be, you know, ready to take on the world. And so many times we get into these bad habits that end up affecting our health. Yeah. So I've incorporated that all in my medicine now. I'm practicing in Carlsbad and soon to be in Orange County. Here come, uh, I don't know when this, this podcast will come out, but come February. So yeah, it'll probably, making be, moves it'll and, probably be open by then. You have a, uh, well, we'll say, I'll ask you at the end of the podcast. All yeah. right. So we have a lot of different boy, uh, boy <laughs> points to cover. Always. As I said, like this, this podcast is long overdue. So we're going to probably deviate a little from some of your discussion points. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll cover the basis real quick. So obviously you are, you know, one of the doctors I promote. So I, you know, I know for, you know, without any shred of doubt that you understand how to do this, but I want to get your take. Yeah. Um, I want to get your take on doctors that don't know how to do this. And without, as you know, on this show, disparaging anybody because we don't do that here, but you know, how important, you know, for an average listener, is it to work with a doctor like you or like Jim Meehan or like Keith Nichols or like Rob Kominarik or I can name a million other people, but well, I, actually that's a lie. I can only name a couple yeah. other people. Yeah. But like really truthfully, like how important is it that you as a patient work with a doctor from a health optimization standpoint? And I don't want to just label this testosterone, but yeah. from that angle, how important is working with a doctor that knows what they're doing? Oh, I mean, extremely important. It's kind of like working with a good trainer. A lot of trainers will mess you up rather than help you out. And I see this a lot of times. I'm very fortunate. Again, I went to medical school for the philosophy. So when I went into school, we sat down, we talked about diet. We talked about literally everything. And I, you know, we were at A4M this weekend and I ran into a lot of doctors who are making the transition out of emergency right. medicine they or internal are. medicine. They don't have a future if they don't do that. Well, and it's, it's a mess over there and, it, and I get it. It's not fun. You're treating symptoms all day. And I, I, you know, I love all those people and I want to encourage them to come over into this realm. If they don't have the philosophy and they're not doing it for the right reasons, they're going to cut corners. Exactly. Like you talk about all the time, yes. lab testing. So, and I, I, again, I only really use lab testing as a map of a forest. And I tell right, that I exactly. don't, I don't treat levels. You it's come in and you say, point. it's just a yeah. basis point, it's but you come in point. You come in with symptoms and I, dude, I've put guys that I would say most doctors would look crazy at me because their levels were naturally pretty high, right? You know, but I doubled them and then all their symptoms went away. Exactly. You know, so to me, my, yeah, my initial intakes are an hour. I get to know you. We become, I don't want to say friends, but I, I, I need to know way more about your life than just a number. Right. And unfortunately that's our system. Oh, your number is 300. Your number is 200. I have guys that come to me and their number is 400 and they feel great. And I'm like, okay, maybe we won't consider testosterone replacement. Maybe it's your thyroid. Exactly. You know, the other doctors, they don't measure prolactin. They don't measure thyroid. What about your LH and FSH? Is this primary or secondary uh, hypogonadism, right? Or but sleep. See, what you, but what you're saying though is so advanced. I want to just like dumb it down. And again, obviously my audience, you already know is sophisticated and they can understand this, but yeah. I want to you know, because again, remember, this isn't the TOT Revolution podcast, Michael. This is yeah. the Jay Campbell podcast. So yeah. I might have a listener who's not aware of me and you, right? So yeah, yeah. To, to their credit, I want to dumb it down for them a little bit for, and even so you can show how br bright your mind is. Uh, and, thanks. But yeah. the reality is, the reality is, is all those things that you just said are true. But to just dumb it down and to back it up and make bigger picture. Dude, all those things you just said, the 90, and again, I'm not being mean. I'm being point of fact, 90% of general practitioners have no idea of any of the things you just talked about, right? Yeah. So let's just be really honest and let's just make this bigger picture and say, if you are a patient and you're new to the Jay Campbell podcast or to the Jay Campbell ecosystem and you don't even know who Michael Moeller is, Dr. Michael Moeller, um, don't think that you can just go to your GP or your family doctor and you're going to be evaluated in the ways that we're talking about on this podcast because it's not going to happen. And that's what I am attempting to convene. And obviously, yeah. I've done a great job to my audience. But now as we expand, this is important for people to understand. You are not going to go to a garden variety doctor anywhere in the world 
and expect to get this level of expertise and this level of awareness, you know, on your personalized health. And this is where, you know, the big picture is, is obviously you have to start taking ownership for your personalized mm-hmm. health. But just, but just talk a little bit about that. I mean, in your mind, like really, I'm not bullshitting people. I mean, the percentage of docs that are in the GP, you know, insurance-based subrogation uh, medical world that can do what you do are almost none. I mean, we're talking what, three to 5%? Well, not in, and it, and it's, yeah, I want to be extremely humble and say, you know, but I'm also proud of what I do. And I, I pour my heart and soul into this, just like you, you right. didn't like it. Your, your book is one of the best resources out there. So if you, obviously you, if people are listening to this, they probably checked it out. If you haven't really go and read that book, because having that book and going into your GP is going to put you sometimes uh, even ahead of the doctor, just cause yeah. look, they look, not sometimes, I, almost all the time. Again, GPs, yeah. not specialists, GPs. Well, and how much of, of our medical care system, we know this is controlled by the pharmaceutical exactly. industry, right? Exactly. So step one is I'm a cat. So part of the, part of the thing is step one, I'm cash only. And what that allows me to do is literally give you the care that you need. When you go to a general practitioner, 99% of the time when they're, they are charging insurance, they can't do what they want. So if you came to me, and you had a problem. And number one is like, they don't take a, a, a well-rounded view. They look at, oh, you came in for low testosterone. I'm just going to do testosterone. But like I said, what about thyroid? What about sleep? What about these other variety of things? But again, they're pretty well handcuffed. So I mean, number one, I think one of the biggest things is finding a doctor that's going to spend time with you and get the details. And that's the number one thing is most of these places, they're cookie cutter. Oh, here you are. Here's a dose. There you go. And to be honest, Jay, sometimes that works. You know, as far as the path of, of, of least resistance and money, they're cheaper, but you get what you pay for, right? What you put in is what you're going to get out. So if you put more time and effort, and I tell my patients all the time, go watch Jay Campbell, get this book, watch my YouTube video, watch some of these things, get educated first. I personally don't want to take responsibility for your health. Naturopathic medicine, we have a philosophy and it's called doceri, doctor, doctor means teacher. When you come in and sit down with me, I'm going to guide you and say, hey, if this were, if you were me, if you're my loved one, this is what we should do. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to take the actions that we're talking about here today. And if you're not here to make a change, like that's one of the main things too. And you probably experienced this. People think, oh, I'm just going to stick a needle in my ass and I'm going to be better. Like, sorry, bro. It doesn't work that way. You still got to go to the gym. You still got to work out, but it will be a catalyst to help you feel better. And that's going to transition to all areas of your life. So Really just try and find, number one thing is if you find a doctor that spends time with you and that they care, people, what is it saying? People don't care how much you know until they know that you care. Exactly. So just find a doctor like me. I don't know everything, Jay. I've seen so much stuff in the, in the last handful of years that I can't even begin to tell you five years ago that they would just completely stump me. But you come to me with a weird problem, I'm going to go to PubMed. I'm going to talk to people like you. I talk to Jim. I talk to other doctors. Like, hey, what do you think about this? What is this angle? So half of it is just finding someone that will spend time with you. And you can build a relationship. You can't just jump around from doctor to doctor, like jumping around workout programs, diet, all these things. You know, it's the new year, right? Make a commitment to changing and going in the right direction. So you can, you can roll the dice with a local practitioner. And, and I hope that you find that. I'm here. You can find me and there's Jim and, and Keith and there's people all around the world that, that, you know, we can recommend. And maybe you find a diamond in the rough. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't like to coerce people into come working with me, but obviously I'm proud of what I do. So well, first off, um, Fuck, dude, I should just turn this podcast over to you. Well, I'm going I'm to ask you to like sub for me at times when I don't have the time to do this because honestly, <laughs> I, I, it's very rare that I don't speak or jump in. But I mean, everything you say is very salient. You know, there's, <laughs> I mean, sounds like you talk to me on a regular basis. Yeah, I know, right? You think we were mean, friends or something. No, I mean, everything you just said is so great. And to my audience, you know, please you go back and watch and rewatch this if you have to and listen to what Michael's saying. I mean, he, he hit on so many points. Like I don't even really know how to really circulate and summarize, but yes, optimization is one step. You know, the best, the best way to say it is like, you know, in living a fully optimized life, which you even mentioned too, that book has one chapter on hormones and thyroid, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like get balanced, recognize that there is no magic cure all, you know, exercise in a bottle, you know, Holy grail pill. There's no easy button for getting your physical health and obviously your mental and spiritual health in order. It's just one phase. And as he said, you know, I love that word, obviously from, um, from your, your naturopathic doctors and naturopathic to practice, you know, and that you guys are literally just teachers. All you're doing is literally going to be guiding them on the path. And that's, that is the importance of a healer. Again, as I call him a true healer, which clearly Michael is. And most healers today that are in the sick care, and you know, sick care has even gotten the label. It really is just insurance subrogated 
medicine. <laughs> yeah. That's the best way to say it. Let's just be honest. And again, I'm not disparaging people because I have a lot of doctors who watch the show and are watching right now and they're probably saying, Jay, I hate you saying that because I got to make a living. But dude, at the end of the day, when you allow big pharma yep. to dictate how you practice medicine, I'm just calling a spade a spade. And I'm not, I'm not blaming you. I'm not judging you. You know, like Dr. Um, uh, Betsy, Dr. Elizabeth Hurth, amazing orthopedic physician, surgeon in Colorado, has a thriving optimization practice. But, you know, she shared with me, and, you know, she was at the same tailor-made party that you were, that she's like, it's a difficult mindset to remove myself yep. from my partner practice, which is thriving as an orthopedic doctor or surgeon, um, to go into full optimization. But her heart is in full optimization because she sees the path. She sees where everything's going. But it's not easy. And, you, you know, again, you mentioned that too. It's very difficult to extricate yourself from a system that may or may not most of the time pay you very, very well to play their game. But as you know, as a true healer and doing what your heart is going to mandate that you do, you're going to have to get out of it because again, who's going to sit in that system and allow, you know, insurance, you know, slash big pharma, which controls insurance to dictate how you practice medicine. Right. Yeah. And, and I think it really comes down to people cutting corners. Like Jay, look at your life, right? Like 30 is kind of when you really turn things around. So it's been a while. Like yeah. myself, I was very fortunate at, at 20 years old that I came down with that interstitial cystitis. And that, yeah. so yeah, it's the last 10 years has, has been me diving into these things. I've cut my teeth. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've gone vegan. I've done paleo, all these different types of diets. And unfortunately, a lot of people see people like, you know, they, they'll watch this podcast, like, okay, I'm going to be different tomorrow. Like guys, it's yeah. not, it's not a diet. It's a live it. You know, same thing with food. You're going to have to slowly make changes. This is a journey, people. We're not going to be there tomorrow. And I think that's part of it at least in, in, in my life for this year, one of the things I'm going to work on really is presence, right? Is coming back to living in the moment and realizing that, that now is the time to make these changes. And we just have a society that's so based upon results, right? And that's why medicine is all about symptoms, but it doesn't fix the problem. You know, I have so many people that come in and they have a symptom, they want me to fix it. And to me, I'm telling you, I'm like, look, you're basically like driving a car over, over tax every day and having me come and change your tires. How about this? How about you stop driving over the tax? You're going to have to make a lifestyle change and it's not going to be easy, but that is what's going to give you lasting change for the rest of your life. And it's going to help promote a healthier life. And not only does it change your life, but it changes all those people around you, right? Like how many, how many times, at least I can speak for myself when I'm better, the people around me are better. Oh, of course. Right? And, that, and that, that goes to vibration. That goes to energy. I mean, you, you know, law of attraction, we're going to get into the spiritual woo woo stuff because <laughs> we're both extremely woo woo. And I don't care. It's the Jay Campbell podcast. So I'm going to talk woo woo. There we go, man. You can I always, un, you can always check out right now. You know, I get, as you know, I get, I send them to you all the time, right? I get messages from people on YouTube. What happened to the Jay Campbell that used to talk about Arimidex? <laughs> I mean, that's one part, bro. <laughs> one part of the system. Uh, dude. There's so much here. That guy is no longer. He's still here. He's transformed, man. He's the Phoenix. <laughs> yeah no but you know what i'm saying but um dude so this is such a good podcast okay so just before we leave and go into our spiritual stuff which is what you and i love um where is it going and obviously it's an opinion question we're at the beginning of 2020 we're both yeah. excited we're jazzed but where is and again it's opinion but where is optimization medicine going knowing just to set it up a little bit knowing that big pharma is definitely attempting to control and, 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 and maybe really prescribe their own, uh, prescribing and, you know, very restrictive prescribing indications for hormones, right? We know that, yeah. without, you know, putting the buzzwords in there. And then your opinion on how peptides is going to revolutionize the game. 100%. Some of my favorite questions. And uh, for, for, those, for those of you who aren't aware, the FDA is working on really controlling the compounding pharmacies. Uh, their argument is that the compounding pharmacies aren't as efficient or clean as the manufacturers. So therefore we should all buy from Pfizer, right? Like you can go to a compounding pharmacy and, and get a, like a medication for a fifth of the price because it's localized and you can get it individualized. And for some reason, the FDA um, doesn't really like that, which, you know, from a money point of view and from a, people are people. And when people get in places of power, they like to use that. So it's very convenient that maybe, oh, I don't know, someone in Pfizer might be pushing that agenda forward, right? We've went down that route with a lot of these drugs. So it's unfortunate when people get in places of power, they, 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 
they tend to abuse that. So we'll see. I have hope that we can hold out that the compounding pharmacies can hold on to uh, a lot of the hormones, you know, just from seeing, I think there's enough, I hope there's enough guys listening to this. If someone tries to take away their testosterone, they're going to get rowdy enough, you know, and then we can go into the, the idea of like, maybe that's what society wants. Maybe society wants weak and sick men that have low testosterone. So they're unable to be, you know, do good things in society and be good men. Well, hold on. I'll just say we already know that is the answer. I mean, we're not, we, we don't have to worry about being conspiratorial here. This is yeah. the Optimized Life Podcast. Dude, we already have data. We already know that. We, we can look at, um, you know, I, I listened to some guy yesterday. I don't want to rabbit hole on you because I want you to finish yeah. on peptides. But I yeah. listened to some guy yesterday who talked about, again, the energy cycle. And we both know that the spiritual, you know, whatever you want to look at it, you know, from a geodidactic solar system cosmic standpoint we have new energy flowing into the universe right now and everyone handles that energy differently and based on your vibratory rate and again this was mind-blowing to me but it all makes sense and i'm reading some ancient texts right now that talk about it too but based on where you are now right like you and me we're in the 400 to 500 all the time and when we're really optimized and feeling really great we probably get into 540 which is pure love right we care we, we have love for the species this this the world you and i both do a lot of inner work the people that are close to us do that but for the average person in population right now they're lower right they're most of them are below the line of integrity some people are right above it and again for people that don't know what i mean vibration is your level of being it's where you state are you a victim or are you empowered most mm -hmm. people who blame everybody for their problems and can never take ownership are lower on the vibration scale. If you take ownership, you're higher. Anyway, that said, what you just said about hormones, the energy is changing people of a lower vibration state to go insane. And when yeah. I say go insane, it means that they don't even identify sexually as male or female. So, you know, this, this podcast that this guy was given, and I don't know this guy's name and I won't give him credit because I don't know him, but he was very interesting. And he said that he can prove that it's the energy of the universe. And again, people that are spiritually advanced, higher vibration people are feeling it even better. They have senses of love. They have senses of like profound peace, whatever, you know, depending on your inner work state. But then the people that are very low vibration and are in a constant fight and struggle and, you know, that they get more confused biologically. And so they become sexually weird, trans this, trans that. And again, I'm not labeling or defining or, or making fun of people that are like this. I'm just saying that this is part of the energy of the universe. So mm -hmm. yes, dude. And are they, meaning, you know, who's in charge of this place, directly doing it? I would, ag I would agree or, or I would agree that you could disagree that they're not. But I would also argue that you could point that they can, right? I mean, obviously with the studies with EDCs, Yep. We know that EDCs are changing and feminizing biological males in all mm -hmm. species, across all species development. So yes and no, I can make an argument for both sides, but I definitely know now that the energy of the universe is changing people cellularly slash DNA, right? You could talk about latent, latent DNA being activated based on where you are vibrating. So if you're a very low vibration, you're going to struggle in this new energy. But if you're a higher vibration, and what does a higher vibration mean? I'll let you answer it. But it's like you love people. You're nice. You treat people with the golden rule. You're not fucking people over over yeah. money. Well, but, and that's you know, it's, cutting it's people off in traffic. That's that's all red. You know, when you look through the chakras, right? That's all the root. Yeah, your root chakra, and that's really about just your foundation in life. And that's exactly. the that's the you know red and orange. That's the fight totally. or flight. That's the first two chakras. That's all about just like existing and, and not thriving though. And as you can move up, you move up those, those things. Yes. And then you get to yellow, which is, you're going to have more energy and then green, you're going to feel more connection and love to other people. And then you activate your third eye and you're intuitively feeling more connected to, and then bam, you you're into the universe. So awesome, dude. I love yeah. how you know all that. That's great. Yeah. And so we, and it all goes together, you know, and as far as optimization even goes, even with hormones, being able to, you can go one or two ways. You know, if you have a, if, if you have a biochemical imbalance, it will show up um, you know, mentally and emotionally. So you can try and fix it from either end. You know, I would prefer to come from both, you know, do the inner work and do some hormones and, but it all goes together. And so we can have one or we can have one or the other, but I think at the end of the day we need both. And so unfortunately, when we look at the control of this, my main argument is I just, the only argument that I can have is whether or not what's happening right now is purposeful. And to me, that doesn't matter. What you're saying is true. Like we have endocrine disrupting chemicals everywhere. Testosterone levels are down. Infertility is on the rise. Like the problems are here. It doesn't matter whether or not it's purposeful and it's coming from the top. We just know it's wrong. And we got to fix it. So, and that's where optimization comes in. And if they're trying to shut down the compounding pharmacies 
NAD. We know it's beautiful for literally everything in the body. It's your, it's, it's a, it feeds your mitochondria, the powerhouse of your cell. And they're trying to take that away from IV form. It's helped thousands of people overcome addiction, right? Like how bad of an addiction problem do we have right now with the opiates? So it's not even, it's not only even optimization, but also as far as, you know, getting rid of, you know, helping people the, get over sickness. And I think, yeah, to your point, I think peptides are super exciting. Jay, I got an email. I had an elderly woman who depressed, GI issues, hip pain. I, one bottle of BPC. She writes me and said, and she was even skeptical, skeptical about taking it. I said, Hey, let's just try it out. She didn't try it for about a month and she emailed me over Christmas and was like, Dr. Muller, I can't even, I can't even begin to thank you. Um, brain fog's gone. I can move without hip pain and my GI issues have resolved in one bottle from the BPC 157, you know, and as a doc, one of the frustrating things about being a doctor is that you often, when, when you get people better, you don't hear about it, right? You come in the office, I fix, you know, you fix yourself and then you leave and never hear from you. The people that you don't fix are help. They come back and tell you how bad of a job you did. So it was really cool for me to get an email like that. So if you're ever a patient of me, I love hearing that stuff. So, you know, it helps build my morale and helps me spread more love. But the peptides, they're going to be game changers, really, you know, from the growth hormone and like your experience with the, the five aminos. And I took a dihexa today, so my brain's uh, buzzing pretty well. So, so. I haven't used di 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 dihexa yet. I mean, I have a bunch of it. They gave it to me. I mean, I, I think. Oh, I, yeah. I'll, You'll I'll love it. it. I don't want to say what yeah. I want to say. I'll say it off air. I don't want to say it publicly, but um, talk about it just for a second. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, dihexa, it's a, it's a. All these peptides are naturally occurring amino acid sequences. So angiotensin is something that your body produces and it actually helps raise your blood pressure. But something else it does, it activates something called hepatocyte growth factor, which are basically like very similar to the way stem cells work, right? So basically it's going to do all good things all throughout the body, but most particularly in the brain. A lot of the studies right now are using it for Alzheimer's and other forms of neurodegeneration and because it seems to be about seven times as strong as brain-derived nootropic factor. So to me, it's going to be kind of the, the big uh, uh, nootropic of the future. Now, I remember I talked to Andrew, Nick Andrews about it a little bit too. And I feel like there are, you, know, you have to be careful. I'm, I haven't been taking it consistently because again, it's, it's a little bit new, but as far as it like might be too powerful, right? So as far as too much brain growth, I won't say it would probably go as far as tumors or anything, but you know, anytime we put stuff in the body, you know, especially with anabolics and you start talking about all these uh, testosterone derivatives, we've talked a little bit about that before, Jay. Um, there's no such thing as a biological free lunch, right? So, and that's part of where people like you and I come in to educate everyone and be like, look, yeah, uh, this might help in this area, but you might get this side effect over there. So to me, it's really trying to balance out what are the pros and cons versus what are the potential risks. And then again, that's where I, I really like handing that over to the patient, especially with testosterone. That's the conversation I have a lot with. I'm like, here are your pros. You're, you're 75, you're depressed, no libido, fat, overweight. Um, there's a chance, you know, and I don't even think there's chances of prostate cancer and all that. But even if you wanted to go in, I'm like, look, would you not risk that to have all these things back? So, and I think that's kind of the future of optimization is really starting to weigh out because I think we're going to have a lot more research, especially anecdotally with a lot of practitioners like myself and a lot of information gatherers like yourself coming together and being like, hey, what have you seen in the space? What are these other doctors um, as far as benefits? And then moving forward with that. So, I'm super excited for peptides and, and the future of optimization in general. So, Awesome, man. All right. So, listen. So, as you know, I, I don't do these over 40 minutes. I mean, I could talk to you all day. Yeah, so we have we yeah, have like we have like we have like twelve minutes, twelve to thirteen minutes. So in okay. twelve to thirteen minutes, and I may go fifteen. Um, I want to talk about spirituality. Okay, perfect. And I want to make this extremely productive because you and I are very advanced, and you know, very a lot of credit, a lot of credit to Michael. He's only tw you're thirty yet or twenty nine. I'm thirty. Hit the big thirty. Sorry, thirty. I forgot. I thought I figured you hit the thirty. You hit the big yeah. thirty. But uh, but anyway, for to being a thirty year old physician who knows his shit like he does, and also to be as he already said, doing the work, you know, Thanks, tending man. your garden. Um, it's a big step. And, you know, I read, obviously, as you know, and maybe some of the people, I got to really start remembering to talk to in a way that not everybody that know, knows me or you, right? So it's like, I got to talk a little bit bigger picture, but I am a prodigious reader. One of my things that I do or will be doing moving forward in 2020, it's like one of the top things in my goals is to do a book report on all my books and then yeah. store them in the cloud. Right. And I have my good friend, my IT guru, Max Maxson, has built a very awesome Notion document, which, by the way, I'll share with you. I'm going to share with all my inner circle 
So you guys can kind of see the books and then just get a summary, a synopsis. So I think this is going to be huge for humanity as we move forward to like really have these type of edgy books. But anyway, I'm up to about 800 esoteric search for meaning, mankind's ancestry, you know, books that I've read in the last 10 years. And they're really all over here to me, to my right on my bookcase. I have a big, you know, ceiling high bookcase over here and they're all collated. Alphabet, uh, alphabetically and then also based on what I consider them, right? I have consciousness, I have aliens, I have like pure esoteric, I have ancestry. So they're, it's really cool, but I've just never done a good job of like putting them in a organized fashion that other people could see. So that's coming for me. But the big picture that I really want to make this with you so awesome is I want you just to kind of tell me what you think a person who has absolutely no understanding of what even spirituality means can first do as a first step in their mm. life right now. And before you answer, and then we'll get more deep and we'll go granular is I want people to understand that religion and spirituality do not, they're not, they're, they're, they do not equate. Now that doesn't mean a person who's religious can't be highly spiritual, but you know, so many people, as you know, in the world today, uh, attribute their religion and what they were raised to believe, right? B E capital L capital I capital E lowercase B lowercase E, you know, they're not the same thing. So I, I wanted to set that up so that people don't watch the show and think that I've become some sort of a religious, you know, Bible thumper because I'm not, mm -hmm. nothing of that. So I, I want you to understand, and I'm not against people who are Bible thumpers, but I'm just saying that you and I are speaking spirituality is not connotated with religion. So with that out of the way, dude, what is a person? who does not consider themselves quote unquote spiritual, or maybe doesn't even know what the fuck you and I are saying right now. Yeah. What, what is, what does it mean in your opinion to be spiritual? <sighs> That's a tough one. I mean, I think one of the biggest, what's the word I want to even say like cloggage or like backs back up in, in, in the world right now is the influence of material objectivism and materialism. We're just so much like, if I can't see it, I don't believe it, right? And if you're in that, and, I, and so New Year's was great. I, I was in uh, Venice and I talked to a, quite a bit of spiritual people on New Year's, which was, you know, a spiritual, religious, some atheists. Yeah. And I had probably 10 different conversations. This is one of my favorite things to do, go to a party. Like, what do you think of God? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't exist or it does exist or not a bearded man in the sky. And we can you know, kind of go back and forth. And, and, and I've very much like my diet, I've been all over the place, born and raised Catholic. Of I kind of lost the Jesus thing. And then I went into spirituality. Then I was atheist all the way to nihilist. Like right. I was very much an objective materialism right. person. Um, thankfully, some plant medicine experiences really helped with that. <laughs> Dude, it, we, I, just have to, I do have to laugh at people like you and me because, of course, same path as you, born in the Midwest, Catholic, blah, 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 oldest of nine kids. But it is, it is funny to think back when we were nihilist slash atheist and think how insane that is knowing what we now know. Right. Oh man. I wish I could go back. And, and it's so funny. Um, right. you know, and everyone has their own way. Uh, there's actually in the, in the Gnostic gospel of Thomas, it's funny, this quote appeared to me twice in the last couple of days. And, uh, I wish I had it perfectly memorized. And it's something along the lines of if whatever is within you doesn't, if you don't allow it to come out, it will destroy you or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I really, I just want to pull it up. I have it right here. I sent it yeah, to my no buddy problem. Rhett last night. No, no yeah. problem. I mean, I mean, again, you're talking yeah, about Jesus, Go ahead. Jesus. Jesus said, if you bring forth what is within you, you will bring forth what will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, you will not bring forth what you not bring forth will destroy you. So literally about like living your authentic self and going within and well, for me, let me, add, let me just add to that. Yeah. Yes. Everything is found within. There is within, nothing yin and yang. without. Nothing is without. It's all inside you if you decide to seek it out. Mm hmm. I 100%. Yeah. It's, it's, and the thing is, at least for myself, and I think like yourself as well, it's like you're going to have to go on a spiritual path. And, I, and again, this is just like health. People are like, oh, I'm just going to, like, and it was funny for me. Oh, I'm just going to do ayahuasca one time and, and then I'm going to know God and figure it out. Right. Oh God, dude. Like, sorry, bro. That's like step one. If you're lucky, really at the end of the day. And honestly, that's not going to happen as you know, to anyone, especially if you just, a lot of the people have read, read the blog. I mean, I've done it now three times DMT MEO and being in fear or anxious or, you know, negative. That's exactly what the plant gives you. I don't mean to rabbit hole. Go ahead. Go back. No, 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 no. And I, I agree with you on that. It's just all these things go together. And yes. so I, for me, step one was 
I, I went the route of really like philosophy and psychology because again, I wanted to find, I wanted to beat like materialism and objectivism at its own game, right? Because at the end of the day, it's like Yoda says, we are not this crude matter. We are luminous beings. And to live in such a world, at least for myself, when I was nihilistic, I just didn't like who I was as a person. And that designed the way I viewed the world. Like, okay, there's only this time and space. Like what matters? What doesn't matter? And when you start having something that's bigger than yourself, like anyone who's ever done anything in this world has always had some type of thing that drove them, some type of connection to a higher self, a higher, whatever you want to call it. And to me, it's like that is a spirit. Like I say, I envision myself in the future. That, that, that me doesn't exist in this material world. Right, Jay Campbell of 2020 is was is completely different than 2015. That spirit has always been there. You try and manifest it, right? right? So, like to me, if it's 2020 and you're ready to go change your life, that doesn't doesn't it doesn't exist in the now, but it exists in the spiritual. You can say mental, emotional, whatever you want to call it. Like, fine, whatever that is is not here and now. It's somewhere else in another dimension, in another time, in another space. Like our loved ones that are dead, their spirit lives on. Yeah. You know, that's the thing with Jesus. Came back, like his spirit is here. He's still doing, something is going on. Like his, his, his presence, the way of being is still affecting people around him at this time. Right, as the Gnostics called it, the way. Okay, so amazing. Again, I could talk to you all day. So we got like <laughs> nine minutes. All right. So I, 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 want, I want to really put some amazing take-homes for people. Yeah. Um, in this podcast when it comes to spirituality. So you just kind of hit on it. I'm just going to go deeper and I'll let you elaborate. But yeah, existing in a finite, limited, you know, existence, which is fear of death, mm. is really yep. the great hindrance for a quote unquote spiritually inclined man or woman. And what I mean Amen. by that is, and I want you to flesh this out, is that when one understands what you just said, which is that we are nothing more than whirring electrons and plasmatic <laughs> sparks underneath these physical husks, these meat suits, these flesh puppet meat modems, whatever you want to call them. That's when people, you know, again, if you've gotten to that level, that's when you can just manifest a level 10 life because you are not hindered by lack or limitation and, and lack and limitation is being in fear. Right. And, and, and you and I both know many, many people, very successful people. Again, if you define success by monetary status, um, but you know, who are like, I mean, I have friends like this, you know, multimillionaires and they'll be like, dude, I just want to just, I want to think like you, I want to, I want to be like how you exist. And I'm like, well, why can't you just choose to? And they're like, well, because if I die, who's going to take care of this, right? Nobody's going to be around to take care of so-and-so. And so my point is, is that when you realize that you are here in this physical body, and you are here to quote unquote, enjoy the ride, manifest an amazing experience, do unto others, be the, live by the golden rule, forgive, love, accept, allow, all those things. Dude, everything falls away. All that nonsense of expectation, taking care of other people, running a $30,000 a month operation. I mean, I could ad lib forever, but it's like you realize that the the joy is just in the state of being mm -hmm. and just like you said, you said in the now, right? Cause there is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. They haven't happened. They don't even exist. If they did happen, all you have is the present moment or the zero point. That's all you have. And it's like when you live in that zero point at all times, dude, no one is going to dissuade you. You are a master in physical form when you can be the neutral observer at all things. And you can recognize that like, Hey, I may get caught up in some sort of egoic physical fight or disagreement or something. I could get caught off in traffic. You, you realize all those things can happen that you're, that are beyond your control, but the master in physical form, the neutral observer can recognize that they're being sucked into that vortex and pull mm -hmm. right back out and say, you know what? It happened. I'm over it. Which is hard. Like all the things you're saying, I 100% agree. And I'm working on it every day, right? That's part of tending the garden because you're right. Like at the end of the day, fear sets in, which is not a spirit of God. God did not give us fear. Like that's of the devil or whatever you want to call it. And I think you hit it on the head that I think one of the biggest things about becoming a, a spiritual person. And if you look, and again, I don't like throwing the baby out with the bathwater with a lot of these religions, but the Egyptians, they had, they talked about you living on after death. Christianity, Jesus came back from the dead. He overcame death. You know, and it's funny when I talk to a lot of people, and if you're able to get deep in a conversation like this, I'll ask them, like, do you feel like, do you really feel like this is your home? Like when people are like, 
I'm like, a lot of people that I've always talked to talk about like, I feel like I'm from somewhere else. Yeah. I feel like I come from somewhere else. And whether it's a star seed, a Pleiadian, you know, an angel of God, whatever it is, like almost every person that I've cracked open is like, this isn't my home. Right. This isn't who I know it. I have an internal feeling somewhere exactly. inside of me that this isn't the end all be all. Exactly. And I think that's step one, but you have to have, and then it's funny though, because then you have to step into a place of faith, exactly everything you said. Like there's going to be shitty things that happen. There's going to be stress and there's going to be worry. But if I have faith that this isn't my final resting place, and at the end of the day, I'm going to go be with God or source or universe or whatever it is, it's like you can strip that away. That was one of my big lessons for 2019. And, and for me, one thing I'm trying to let go of more than anything is worry. Because like you said, people are like, oh, what about tomorrow's meeting? Or what? I was like, none of that shit matters. No. Really? Connection, love, you and me together here, like uniting and then helping people out to serve. One of the messages I had on plant medicines was like, this was never about you. Like I've had multiple times I'm on plant medicines and I'm like, I don't feel motivated. I'm just like trying to find my way through life. And it's like, bro, go out and serve, go out and help someone. Like you want to, you want to feel good. That's was one of the main messages I always get when I get lost off the path is like, why am I, what am I not serving? Who am I not helping? Can I do this for someone else? Cause when you do it for someone else, it's just, ah, you just give. It's like giving is the ultimate receiving, really, at the end of the day. And it so it's is. stepping into that, but it gets scary to give. You no, know, sometimes you get rejected, and sometimes all these, you know. So like, I don't have it figured out. I don't have it mastered. Just like you, I'm trying to go down the path and and live that spiritual life. And at the end of the day, in a society that is very much materialist and objective reality and all this, it can be difficult. But I'm not of this world, so that's not my focus. You know? <laughs> I was just gonna say that. So we're so Vulcan mind meld. So, dude, all that's profound stuff. You know what you said. The importance of all that, if I could summarize it, is this. You know, no, we're not perfect, and it's recognition of the imperfection. It's recognition and allowance of knowing that you're going to be taken off the path, and that you could be, you know, as you know, you could have the greatest month, or quarter, or year that you've ever had and literally wake up on January 1st and find out, or well, January 2nd, cause you won't be able to get the diagnosis that you have terminal cancer. Yeah. So it's like, it's just enjoy again, the Nissan commercial always comes back to me now, you know, which is enjoy the ride. Yeah. And, 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 and the reality is, is that it's a choice to enjoy the ride, right? Amen. You can get caught up in the struggle and the fight and, you know, to, to use to politics, which you and I both hate, but like, you know, people are attached to their team Yeah, and it's this way because I'm so-and-so. And it's like, dude, you, dude, you already said it. Like if you understand that at base essence, you are nothing more than energy, nothing else. You're not Jay Campbell. You're not Dr. Michael Moore. You're just worrying electrons. Then you can just alleviate and rid yourself of the nonsense. Because as you said, all the material Everything that is objective is literally not stuff you're going to take when you move on to your next experience. And, you know, a, 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 the, one of the ancient textbooks that I'm reading right now, which is absolutely phenomenal, it's called The Call of the Heart by uh, a Russian uh, scientist slash um, author. Her name is uh, Zenobia Dushkova. She says, literally, death is nothing more. This is brilliant, by the way. Death is nothing more than a change of focus. Amen. Yeah. And that's, and that's really what it is, right? Yeah. We're just energy in a meat suit. And as soon as the meat suit meets its end, as you know, you and I could both drive out today and get hit <laughs> by a bus or a, in a crash or a plane could fly out of the sky and run into, I mean, you, you can go physically at any moment, but when you recognize that that energy is all that matters and that the energy is infinite and unyielding and never ending, who cares? Yeah. Just choose to enjoy the experience that you have right now. You know, people will say, yeah, but Jay, you and Michael, you guys make six figures and you have everything and you live in Southern California and you're good looking and you're tall and you're white. I mean, all this <laughs> bullshit. And it's like, dude, that doesn't Thanks, mean Jay. anything. That doesn't mean anything. What matters is that you and I choose to realize that this energy, this expression of physical form right now is transient. Yeah. You know, and we might get 70, 80, 90 years, Michael. We might get 10. We might get three. It's just knowing that it doesn't matter and just enjoy the ride. And you're, you're making that conscious choice, which a lot of people want to play a victim. And, and again, let's be honest too. I think one of the biggest hangups, at least I did when I was kind of atheist and objective, was that how can this exist if the world's so full of suffering? right? Like, oh, exactly. baby's dying. And exactly. at the end of the day, though, what's, what's really strange is you can look at all those traumas and all those terrible things as something bad and then this is a bad world. Or you can choose to 
use that as a way to get better. Ray Lewis has a really cool story about like his mom would get abused by a lot of their boyfriends and he got a deck of cards and, he, and his mom's like, I won't allow you to gamble. He's like, just buy me a deck of cards. And I think he eventually got one. And then what he would do is he'd pull out a deck of cards. He'd pull out like an ace. And he's like 15 push-ups. pull out an, an eight, eight push-ups, And he built himself up. So yeah. that, that turned him into who he was, you know, so often in life, we think things are just going to be this, this easy path. And like, that's never, there's no religious text that says yeah. that everything's easy. Always. It's like, there's going to be tough things choose you know when when you watch lord of the rings you don't see like aragorn being like this isn't my passion i hope i you know harry potter's like this isn't what i'm passionate I'm not about pursuing my purpose exactly it's like no nah, dude i got i got evil to evil's afoot man i gotta fight it you know and i think that's another hang up with our generation is like oh it's not my passion i'm like dude there are people suffering right now that you can go out and help like we all have something to offer you just have to, you know, give up your stuff, give up your resentfulness and like your scare, your scarcity and your fear. And like, once you step into love and, and faith and acceptance, all that stuff is just going to flow to you and you will fall. Out. I've fallen out many of times and I have to come back and do the inner work and realign and be like, why am I here? I'm here to serve. I'm here to help, you know, get aligned and get around people. Yeah. You know, that's the devil's work is to separate the devil. Like gets yeah. you alone. So you can get in your head and just right. run yourself into the ground and then you get sick, you yeah. know? Yep. So get out there and just pick, choose, choose love, choose faith, 2020, get at it and do it. Well, one thing you just said, and then we'll end the show and I'll let people know how they can work with you and stuff. Um, you know, you said you're in this world and not of this world. And as you know, very recently in our conversations and texts and stuff back and forth, like I'm putting this in my new book that's coming out this year on spirituality. Um, I realized that the way to def best define it for people to really understand that. And again, that's a Yeshua slash Jesus slash, slash spiritual avatar, you know, whoever you believe or, or, or acknowledge. Um, being in this world is when you're creating. You and I right now are creating. We're creating content that people are going to be able to listen to, gain wisdom from, and apply in their life. If you're a creator, you are a creator every day. You work with patients, you heal, you offer advice. You know, obviously I do the same thing in all the things that I'm doing, but the difference of being in this world and being of this world is, are you creating or are you consuming? Mm -hmm. And most people, and again, obviously consuming is of this world, right? The devil, as you said, whatever you want to label it, the dark energy, the demiurge, whatever, the Gnostics call it, the Eldebaal, whatever you <laughs> label it as, they are Im imitators and duplicators the false light, right? So they can't create. So what they do is they put out their information that they want you to consume. Mm -hmm. So when you're consuming, you're not creating. So are you serving other people by consuming? No, you're serving yourself, the false light, the ego. Mm -hmm. You're not serving the higher self. So when you realize that it really is, is this simple, Michael, to wrap up the show, which has been profound, just create. It doesn't matter what you create. You could be a janitor create the most amazing offices that are clean and hygienic and full of love and peace that you can create. You know, if you're a content provider or creator, you know, create authentically in ways that can help people. You're a doctor, a healer, serve other people, listen to your patients. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but people today, because of technology, distraction, social media, they're consuming, Michael. As you know, how many people do you yeah. know who literally, literally waste their entire life by watching Netflix, they binge Netflix, then they binge the internet, then they binge whatever it is they do, and they're not creating. All they do is consume. So if you're- I'm being, guilty. Dude, no, you're not though. You Sometimes, consume, no. You consume at times, we all do. Yeah. But what I'm saying is make it a purpose, a, a mission, a passion, whatever, to be a creator more mm -hmm. than a consumer. Amen. You're, of course, yeah. going to consume. There's going to be times where we all watch a movie. Blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah. and we fall off. It's kind of what I'm getting at. Exactly, I, exactly. I, I but like, just, on Instagram this year. just, just yeah. if you're watching this video today and you are in a bad place, your 2019 was terrible. We're a month in now when this probably runs, but you're, you had a really bad 2019. It's a simple choice, as you've already said, like mo numerous times in this podcast, to choose to do more, to be more. So again, now that you know that, like, are you watching Netflix all day, YouTube all day, you know, or are you actually out there doing something, serving, as you said it, contributing? And again, I think the easiest way to label it is, are you creating? Because mm -hmm. if you're creating, you're leading things that are tangibly behind for others. Yeah. So just do it with a positive intention, you know, a loving, positive, peaceful, forgiving intention. And mm -hmm. everything can change. But I mean, I really do think that that's the easiest way to speak 
the people that are not here and they're down here and they don't understand what you know, and I talk about serving. Well, that's how you serve. You create, stop consuming. Dude, how many people are addicted to video games? Addicted oh, yeah. to Netflix, addicted to this, addicted to that. And all those addictions, they're not creating anything. They're just consuming things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? I mean, that's it, dude. It's just, it's and it becomes a cycle and uh, you, make an, you can make the choice at any time to change. Exactly. Right. Just like okay, you're dude, saying. So how do people work with you, man? This has been an amazing podcast. I love it. I love it. Uh, so drmichaelmoller.com and my email is my first name, michaelmollernd at gmail.com. So you can Google me at this point and uh, I'm working on my DBA, Moller Naturopathic Medicine. You can Google. Nice. So, you have so, a really good YouTube channel now too, right? So what Yeah. Yeah. Go and follow me on YouTube. I got a lot of stuff about... Um, peptides, yep. testosterone, kind of all that stuff, a little bit of podcasting, more of which I'm going to hopefully create this year. Awesome. So. Man. Awesome, man. Well, listen, brother, I love you. Thank you so much for coming on for the hey, podcast. Man. I really appreciate Pleasure's, it. Pleasure as always, Jay. Super excited and uh, love and light to everyone out there. Awesome. So if you are a new podcast uh, watcher, viewer slash consumer, uh, and you're not a member of my email newsletter, please sign up. As Michael knows, it's an amazing it. newsletter. Yep. I have a bunch of guys that help me write it. We put out incredibly engaging, if not, you know, actually enthralling content six days a week. It's join dot. Um, well, right now it's totrevolution.com, but for this pot, for the new podcast, I'll probably be join dot jc campbell dot com. So if just check back when this runs in case, in case neither of those work, just send me an email or send my team an email and it's contact at jccampbell.com. So we appreciate you guys, man. We will see you guys next week.